back to sweat equity um, we're in the uh, e66 7 series the 2008 750 li here and um, you know there's a very common sight for a lot of bmw owners i would have to admit um, this happened about a week ago i was driving the car to work on last saturday today is friday the uh, february the 5th so that's the last time I drove this car. And um, I was greeted to this and a whole bunch of other warning messages um, going crazy. Um, basically the car went in limp mode. Um, there were several codes. Um, I will put them up on the screen or something here. Um, basically what the issue seems to be is um, there is a fault with the connector going to the throttle body I found a TSB from BMW um, saying to replace the connector I think it's about six wires basically it's a pigtail and you get um, like some solderless crimp connectors with heat shrink it looks like um, it's an actual BMW part and um, we're gonna go ahead and replace that connector and hope that, that fixes it um, I have not driven this car at all since this happened. I was able to make it back home, but the symptoms were it was running completely fine. Um, I pulled into a uh, McDonald's about 20 minutes away from my house on the way to work, and everything was fine. I'm just laying it idle, put it in gear, start driving to pull off, and the whole car starts bucking, and all the lights are going off, and the car actually died. It actually stalled out. Um, I was able to restart it, and... Um, you know, you press the pedal, the accelerator pedal, and you get like, you know, 1500 RPMs at the best. Um, I turned the car off and on a few times. I had my Carly with me. I cleared codes a few times. Finally got to where it was pretty much in the position it is right now, where the only lights are on are the check engine light and that half engine reduced power light. Um, it drove fine for about a half a mile and of course as soon as I was turning on the interstate is when it did it again so I had to limp up to the next exit and it kind of just limp it all the way home at that point I could not get it to come out of it at all so I'm gonna hit the gas so right now it's revving up so right now it is okay I'm not gonna go very far because I don't know how long it's gonna last. And you know, the way this car is, is it may never do it again for another several months. Uh, let's see, we're good. Probably those two lights will turn off here in a second. Yeah, okay, well, the reduced power light is off. The check engine light would probably have to actually be cleared. So right now, it's doing okay. But yeah, it's not a it's not a fun thing when these cars go in the lit mode. I mean, it's better than nothing. I mean, I was able to get it back home without having to tow it or trailer it. Um, at one point, it did stop shifting gears, but I was able to go into uh, manual mode here on the, on the steering wheel and use the, the buttons to shift it and I was able to you know, get it going up to speed as long as you're kind of on flat ground it's not so bad but, all right so I'm gonna put you down right now and uh, we'll find another place to turn around and go back yeah so uneventful it's typical for this car is that you know it had a moment and now it's running fine I don't know if it's something that just needs to get you know hot to act up but again I mean it's only done this twice um, in, a, in the last year so let's just hope that when I do the repair that is what it was I mean I will show you what the TSB says from BMW and it is literally 
exactly what it did and the same codes. So I have a pretty good feeling about it. And the fact that FCP Euro sells this part. It's a genuine BMW part. It was like $20, $22 or something like that. And I had to pay like $10 shipping because I was only ordering the one thing at a time. Um, and it's kind of right on top of the engine. So it should be a pretty easy thing to do. And if you couldn't do this yourself, it's something that a shop shouldn't charge you a whole lot to do um, compared to what you would probably think was wrong. You know, the car feels like it needs a transmission or something like it, it it just starts going completely crazy you know as far as what this thing feels like when it goes into these lint modes and, and all the messages you get and then to only just be you know a $20 wire harness connector that causes it, it is kind of crazy all right so this is the service bulletin from BMW and you know this has been out, I guess the original was from 2009, and then there was, um, uh, this is dated uh, December of 2014, so this was like an update to the original. It is for the N62 TU, which is the 4.8 liter in the later years, cover these models uh, with a V8, so anything 50, so like a 550i, 650i, um, produced from 9 of 2005 with the N62 TU. There it shows the 7 Series. Okay, so the 7 Series from 3 of 05, so mine certainly falls within that. X5 from 12 of 06. Okay, so here it says the situation, the service engine soon and DSC DTC warning lights are illuminated. Engine enters the power reduction fail safe mode the following intermittent and currently not present EDK related faults may be stored in the DME fault memory. Um, I had two of the three of these. I, forget, I think it was the first one and the last one. Um, it says in most cases fault 5F77 DME invalid data may also be stored. Um, I did not have that. Did you scare away all the bad guys out there? No. Yeah? Everybody's gone? They say the cause is resistance fluctuation in the EDK harness connector is causing inter an interruption in the EDK signal. The correction on a customer complaint basis only if the listed above fault codes are stored and currently are not present, install a replacement EDK harness. Do not replace the EDK throttle for this type of complaint. But this is the the part number right here that I was able to, I just looked it up and got it from FCP Euro. And everything else is just kind of relating to the dealer tax as far as like how they would get paid for it and find, you know, information on doing All right, that. so we're back on the 7 Series. Um, I got the engine cover off and I just pulled off the, the whole airbox um, assembly air intake in the boot there um so this is the new part that i just got from fcp euro basically it is just a new connector with some crimp connectors in there so we're gonna take this out and see what we got and compare it to what's actually in there right now So it does come with some new sheathing as well. Keep it. I use it light to have things stay looking as close to stock as possible. So I unplug this. Yeah, so that's it right there. I don't see any real obvious difference um, between the connectors themselves at all. I guess I'll probably go back up into here and slice this in. All right, so the wire that we're going to be replacing um, goes up into this black uh, plastic um, Oh, why are you stuck in there? All right, whatever. 
just leave that like that for now. So I'm gonna try to see if I can pop this open. I have to get this. Um, this is for the mounting of the the plastic beauty cover. It's got a couple of torques in there, so I'm gonna see if I can take that off. That comes off. Looks like there's still this little bar in the way. Ah. Let's see if I can get the longest extension possible. Oh, we'll probably hit the hood. No, okay, we're good. Alright. Okay, so that's actually now free. And then there's just a bunch of <laughs> well, there's just a bunch of clips holding this together. I'm gonna go all the way back to there under the cow. All right, I've got a few of them started. I think it'd be better if you use like a hook pick to kind of come in under them all and pull them out. You can kind of pry. So far, nothing is nothing is broken, which is nice. Watch them now; they're gonna start to break. Now they say something. Oh, there we go. May not be able to get, have to open it up all the way. Yeah, so I can get in there like that. Pop that out of that little area. I might be able to just to kind of swing it like that and splice them right in there. And they give you like, you know, so that's where this goes in here. You got like an extra eight inches, I'd say, to work with. There's a zip tie holding them down in right, right in there. So I think that might be enough that I can kind of get in there a little bit. I guess I might as well try to open this thing up as far as I can. I guess that might be about as far as I can go with that. You, just, you can see inside there, right here is a zip tie. And I'm going to just cut, and it'll just, I think, give us a couple more inches that I can work with. Let's see if I can find a pair of dykes. All right, so I just basically just took a pair of needle nose and just broke that zip tie. It was really pretty brittle, as you might expect. And you can pull these wires out quite a bit now. So let's see if we can get this thing all the way out of here that and what I'm going to do because the wire colors I think are might be different yeah open this connector up and just match up each pin to whatever wire it is so I know which way to, to wire this this has the same little tabs just kind of like this thing had Let's see if we can just kind of pry these up and open this thing up There we go. All right. So now, at least we can see everything. All right, so basically what you want to do is just open up both connectors, make sure you have them lay in the same way, and then just either take a picture of the three wires that are on this side and on this side, and then you're just gonna just do one at a time, just, you know, um, Cut and splice one wire at a time if you want to just make sure that you get all of the wires in the right order. So that's basically what I'm going to do. Um, and then I'll get in here and show you how to actually do the splicing um, when we get to that point. All right, so this is the, the new connector here. I'm just going to show you. You just want to pry these two little tabs up. I'm doing this so that I can see what which wires are going to which pins. I guess you wouldn't have to do this if you're watching this video because I'm going to show you the wire colors, not necessarily. This just slides off completely. 
like that. And then you can just see all the wires and where they actually go. So come back in a minute. All right, so there we have it. Um, I don't actually know which pins or what as far as like what's one and what's six on this connector. It's not really that big of a deal because at least on the 2008, the um, brown wire with a yellow tracer is going to get spliced into the red wire with a green tracer. The yellow wire goes to a yellow wire. The blue wire goes to a green wire. They're just solid color. They don't have any... Uh, tracer means the line, the, the stripe, if you will. So, one, this is on one side. This is the side that had... So we're starting... Oops. We're starting on the side with the, the release tab. So, you can see you've got the red and green wire on the left the yellow and the green on the car right now it was a brown and yellow the yellow and a blue wire you flip it over what was a yellow with a blue is now a white wire this one on the far left here from the best i can tell it's a white wire with a yellow stripe so it goes from yellow to yellow with a blue stripe to white with a yellow stripe then you have a yellow with a black stripe that's going to go to the middle wire, which is white with a black stripe. Then the third wire on this side, or the sixth wire, was yellow with a green stripe, and now it's going to be white with a green stripe. And this is a BMW part, so at least everything on this side should be the same regardless of what year you have. I guess it would matter. Possibly this side would be different depending on the year. This is a 2008 um, N62 uh, TU V8, uh, 4.8 liter V8. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and put this cover back on the new connector. There's a lip around here that we need to get this over. It does, okay. All right, so the, the part that jets off like that will be to the left of the, the tab, if you can see that. So it goes like that. And before we lock it down, we're gonna get the insulation there inside of it. And just push it down and it's back just the way it was when we started. All right, so I went ahead and just cut off each of the wires. Um, I left, basically I just cut it um, you know, let's see if I can get that in there. You know, about an inch from the end of this thing. So there will be some extra wire. I'm just gonna leave them the, set, the, the, the original length. I don't see any reason why we can't do that. So what you get are crimp one connectors. These come in the package, or these little heat shrinks that actually have one end of them already kind of small. I think what they want you to do is, which I don't like, is to kind of splice them together like this. <clears throat> and then put these over the top like that. So let's see what we got here. Let's take, we got white with a green, goes to yellow with a green. So that's going to be this one right here. Try just stripping off that little like quarter of an inch or so. And I'll just see if I can twist it together a little bit. Slide this over it. Yeah, okay. I'm 
you see that? Yeah, so I'm just sliding it over the two wire ends. And I'm going to take my crimping tool. Not knock it off. Oh my god, can you hold my hand steady? Okay, so I got it right in the middle of that. We squeeze that down. And that should be a good permanent connection. You're gonna put your heat shrink over that and just take a lighter or something and melt that down. And that's how you do that. And I'm gonna just repeat that six times. There you go. So you got a nice, you got a mechanical connection up here. And now you've also got it weather sealed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other five wires. And basically that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be that. We'll just chuck it back in there and make it look like it never happened. Picking a wire, stripping it, and then coming over to my chart to see where it goes. I am trimming a little bit more off these as I go, which doesn't really matter that much. It can stick out a little bit. There's plenty of heat shrink in there. You're kind of double checking as you go because each one you do, you know, you get down to the last one and you're like, wait a second, it doesn't match up anymore. That, you know, he made a mistake somewhere along the way. And, you know, you probably should disconnect the battery while you're doing this. Um, the car is off and the keys are in the house. The car is, should be asleep. It was sitting out here for a couple hours without anything happening to it. So there shouldn't be any issue if any of these touch each other. But you should disconnect the battery before you're doing something like this. Try to get them right in the center. Give them a good squeeze. And then finally, we have the green. Solid green goes to the solid blue. So we, we check out everything lines up the way they should be. Anytime you're doing electrical wiring that's outside of the car, not, you know, inside of the, the cabin that never gets, or theoretically never gets wet, you, you'd always want to make sure that you have some form of weather insulation against it because now it probably would take a really long time for these to corrode being inside of here. But anytime you do have anything outside of the car, where it can theoretically get wet or moisture could be present. So basically what I'm saying is you don't want to just use electrical tape because that's not going to really seal it. And this goes to show you, you know, BMW is saying that it's okay to just use these uh, crimp connectors as opposed to soldering. A lot of people swear by soldering, but when they build the car, they don't really do a lot of soldering. It's pretty much all just things that are you know, pushed together with crimp connectors, you know, the wires in the connectors are generally just crimped on to that pin. So this is kind of the way they build the car to begin with. So you don't have to solder things if you don't want to. I haven't burned myself yet. I'm proud of myself. 
I also have not, this is now the last one, I have not dropped any of these. That was hot. Didn't burn me, but it's hot. Yeah, we, you can keep going and they really shrink down nice and tight around everything. Where it'll be kind of like the same. Um, ooh, that actually got a little melty there. There might be some sort of adhesive in there that you have to kind of activate. I see a little bit oozing out of the top one there. So you might have to go to, you know, kind of just make sure that it's nice and you can see this one here now. It's nice and thin, kind of the same as the top where some of these other ones have a little ways to go. So just, you know, go over them a little bit. You should get them all nice and tight around the wires. Just heard the car wake up. Fuel pump just primed. Not sure why. Would it would it notice? I guess something, but at least everything is now insulated and won't if it touches it, it won't matter as much. That one's a little loose on the bottom. Trying to burn the plastic. Keep it away from everything if you can. It does seem like if you go far enough, they kind of like that hole becomes clogged. So I guess you kind of do need to go a little bit longer. Yeah, see, a little something kind of oozing out. I guess to seal that end off. They're all really tight though, and they come kind of hard. So, yeah, some kind of a sealant. A little bit OCD. Can maybe just uh, kind of do something like that. Got this little zip tie right here. over it like that and that way that extra room that we left should come in the hand you know come in handy now ow this is all complete overkill just kind of push it back in there and then get it to where The actual conduit fits down in this little groove right here. Let's try to get that wire to lay in there as nicely as possible. It's in the little groove. And then you just snap everything down in place. And you would never know, other than the fact that that looks a lot 
blacker than the rest of the wires in there. I mean, not, you know, not really. I mean, it's just new and clean. We're just going to plug that back in there. I'm going to run it under here. And then there's like a little uh, clip right on the side here that it clips into. All right, so we got it plugged in. Make sure that connector clicks. You want to hear an actual click. It kind of, you know, takes a little bit of effort to push it on. Make sure it clicks. It's tucked into there. And it's run right back up into here. Just like it was from the factory. You'd never know that that repair had ever been done. Um, if anyone ever came in here, they could just pop that cover off and they could see that that slice has been done. But as far as just looking at it, you never know. All right, so we got everything buttoned back up. Um, looks like never, nothing ever happened. Of course, you know, these newer cars, they're just pretty much completely covered up when you open the hood anyway. You have to take a lot of stuff off to get to what is actually the engine. Um, so we're going to go ahead and clear the codes. I've been driving for about 15 or 20 miles. Um, I'm not sure what the miles was before we started, but I know it's been at least that. Um, everything seems good you know um i haven't really like hit it yet but i mean you know you would know because this thing just gives you a million morning messages and all that um so yeah i mean everything seems good so far anybody that has these cars what kind of gas mileage do you get um as you can see over here i get like 21.5 average <clears throat> is that uh relatively normal i mean I've, I, you know the car's got eighty-eight thousand miles on it so it's a relatively low miles car um but i drive you know a lot of highway um this car you know it's one of four cars that i drive on a weekly basis so um, it gets, you know, usually when it's driven, it's driven to work and it's mostly, um, highway stuff like that. So, um, is 21.5 good or, you know, people getting a lot less, a lot more. It's kind of curious. Yeah. So basically we've driven from like one side of Carroll County to the other side. We're actually like coming up on, um, Liberty Reservoir here, uh, which is kind of like the dividing line between Baltimore County. So right now we're actually in Baltimore County. We go across this bridge and we're back in Carroll County. Um, we might spot a hook junkie over here. Uh, I doubt it really, but uh, yeah, you know, this is where uh, the hook junkie hangs out sometimes. If it's winter time, check out, you know, hook junkie on YouTube if you like fishing. Um, you can get a little bit of salt water and freshwater fishing, a lot of how-to stuff. Anyway, a uh, little shout out to my brother Dre or Andres. Anyway, um, yeah, so some beautiful scenery here. We've got a little snow left, driving through all the trees. Got a nice comfortable ride here in this limo. Everything is uh, everything is the way it should be. When these cars run the way they're supposed to, life is good. Still doing just fine. Um, we're coming up on, uh, we're on Route 32 right now, Maryland Route 32. We're coming up on one of my favorite places to eat, which is uh, Bullock's right here. This place, um, has been the same my entire life that I can remember. I've been coming to that place since I was probably like 10 or 11, like in the you know mid to early 90s. And um, literally is exactly the same as it's always been. So I think it's more nostalgic than anything. But um, yeah, they uh, raise all of their beef on the premises. So you don't get much more fresh than that. Um, right now with COVID, they, you know, kind of have a little bit of a different operation going than they normally would, but, um, it's still a pretty cool place to go. But, um, yeah, I mean, we've been going now for quite a while. Um, got 424 miles on the trip. I think we were like 
around 390 when I started. So doing great. Um, I just hope that it is actually fixed for real. All right, let's hit it here, shall we? Yep, seems pretty good. All right, so we're getting pretty close back to the house now. The car is done just fine, so I think we're we're good um, on this. Um, if you made it this far in the video, I really do uh, ask that you would subscribe um, to the channel because I'm trying to grow something. You know, like I want to have like some how-to stuff from you know different aspects, not just car stuff. I want to, you know, just right now this is all I'm really working on. Um, eventually we might be doing some other stuff whatever comes along really um, but you know I want to have like a little bit of a you know entertainment factor and I just kind of want to you know see what what people like and you know doing like the drives like this too and stuff like that like just you know like what do you guys want to see um, I'm really thankful for the 21 subscribers that I have as of right now I mean I've only been doing this for about a month so I appreciate everybody that is watching um, but you know, please, uh, just like, share, subscribe. It really does help the YouTube algorithms, um, you know, put my videos in searches, but here we are back at the homestead. Um, there's the used car lot up there and, uh, the old, uh, the old girl did just fine. No limp mode this time. Everything went as planned. So. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, again, like I said, like, like, subscribe, share, do whatever you want to do. And uh, on that, we're going to sign out, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.